everyone. Diane here. I want to give you a quick lesson on how to cook risotto. Italian risotto is so good and it's really easy if you've seen it done once. It's all the base of arborio rice, which is just short, short grain rice. And if you know the basic ratio of liquid to rice, which is four cups liquid, some kind of stock, not a lot to it with plain water, but it doesn't have the flavor, so you want to make some kind of stock chicken, beef, a vegetable, what have you, and one cup of rice. So, here's the technique you do what you're going to do is in the bottom of a saucepan, saute pan, something to hold the four cups when it's done. I start with the base of carrot, celery, and onion. And I cut them so that they are sort of the same size as the grain of rice. Not really big and chunky, but sort of on the fine side. And then we're going to saute that for a couple of minutes to soften the vegetables. And every recipe, there's so many variations on risotto, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to do a simple one of sausage and some mushrooms and a little bit of shallots. I didn't put the shallots in yet because I don't want them to burn while these are softening. And what I'm gonna do, and a little more extra virgin olive oil, while those are softening, I am going to cut my shallot. And you can either mince that or slice it really fine. Sort of makes no difference. I might go sort of a coarse mince because I really like shallots. Can you use garlic in this? Absolutely. But shallots and mushrooms are a really great combination because I think I'm going to finish this when it's done with a little drizzle of truffle oil. So shallots, truffles, mushrooms, what a great combination. So those are starting to soften a little bit. I'll add the shallots, stir them up. What this dish is, is nice, soft, creamy rice. Um, it comes up really good. It's good for a main course. It's good for a side, good for anything. And there is a point, you really can't do this too far in advance, but you can do it to a point where if you're having company for dinner and want to serve it, after not quite all the liquid is added, but after about three cups of the broth is added, then you would pull it off the stove and add the final cup to cup and a half just before you want to serve it. So while these, oh and I should make a note on chicken broth. Now not everybody has time to make chicken stock and have it around, whether you have it in the freezer or whatever. But you'll find this in all the grocery stores, and it's pretty easy. Better than bullion or some kind of a base in a jar. And what I've done, because I didn't have time to make stock today, it's a tablespoon to the quart or four cups of water. And it's pretty good stuff. You know, is it different than your own stock? Absolutely. When you make your own stock, you get a gelatin that comes from the bones, which is a stick to your lips, and there is a difference. But this is good flavor for fast and easy, especially when you probably don't have the time to make it. So you want to make sure that that is to a, just a very tiny simmer in a pot. And you really need this to be a simmer because you want the grain of rice to soak up the liquid. And by having that in a simmer, it soaks it up much easier. So after these vegetables are softened, then I'm going to add the rice. And I want to soften or brown the rice just slightly. This will only take a couple of minutes. And while that is browning, then I am going to slice the mushrooms. Actually, since it's a pretty big mushroom, what I'm going to do is cut it in half and then cut it, on, cut it on its side. And I'm slicing it kind of thin just because I sort of like it a little thin. I guess you could chunk it if you wanted to. And while the rice is browning, I'm going to put the mushroom in so that that starts to cook. And there really are no set rules for 
uh, what goes into risotto. Uh, I try and make risotto the base of it is always carrot, celery, and onion, and then the stock will be dependent upon what you're going to add. A shrimp risotto is really wonderful stuff, or scallops, or mussels, clams, salmon, anything like that, where I would be definitely wanting to use a fish stock for a base, and you can add beef to it. God, there's so many variations on the risotto theme. So, but because this is just a simple little mushroom one, I'm using chicken stock, and we are going to take a look and see. This might need just a tiny bit more uh, oil added to it, and I like extra virgin olive oil because I like the flavor, I like the health benefits. It's really a great oil, and so that's going to go in, and this, now, after this has started to brown, which you can see that it has slightly, um, then you want to add, start adding your liquid a little bit at a time. All right, so now would be the time, if I wanted to, I could splash a little bit of wine, and that does count as part of your liquid. So I would add about a half a cup of white wine to this, but I'm just going to do it straight without the wine and just do the stock, and in which case, I'm going to start adding the liquid just a little bit at a time. You want to do about a ladle full, half cup, three quarters cup, whatever your ladle measures. Uh, and no more than that so that the kernel or grain of rice absorbs the stock. Then you add a little bit more. So now we've got some in. And this is starting to absorb. It goes really quick now. Then that's absorbed. We'll add another ladle. And what you're looking for when this is done is an al dente, kind of like pasta, to the tooth. You don't want it mushy, and, and but you want it creamy. So you need to pull it just before then. So anyway, We'll just keep adding this stock a little bit at a time until I get down to the last half a cup, the last ladle, and in which case then I'll turn the heat off. But we'll let this go just a little bit more. And you do this sort of over medium high heat. What happens if you add all the liquid at once, the kernel will blow apart and then you're not going to have the creaminess that risotto is you know the, the risotto technically has so just a little bit at a time so that the kernel expands slowly and it won't blow apart on you I've seen this served quite a few times where people will serve it via an ice cream scoop and that's not what it should be the first time out maybe the next day if you have some left over but the first time, it should be a nice, creamy um, rice that actually you would serve in a bowl. And so, yeah, all sorts of variations. And it's kind of interesting because if you've never seen this done, and if you've never had it before, you really sort of don't know what it should be like because of not having had a true Italian version. And so... It's good to watch this being done either with me or anybody else, doesn't make any difference, and see how it's supposed to be served, and then, um, then you know what you're trying to achieve. So anyway, we'll let this go. I'm going to let that simmer for a little bit, and you can see it's still a little soupy there, so we're going to let that slowly absorb, and we'll let that go a little bit, and I have my other stuff ready. I'm not going to salt this quite yet because I want to wait until it's completely done and all the uh, stock is in there and then we'll taste it and see how much salt I should really have. Yes, this is really a great dish. It's comfort food at its finest and there's just so much. Somebody asked me 
oh gosh, I'd like to add goat cheese to it. Well, if I were going to finish this with goat cheese, I wouldn't put it on until the end. This particular batch, I'm going to um, put Parmigian, Parmesan Reggiano on it. However, if it were to be goat cheese, it would go on at the end. And then I'd be tempted to add a little bit of maybe sun-dried tomato to it. And possibly chicken would be good in it, stirred into it. Best to pre-cook the chicken and then put that in at the end, shredded. But the um, goat cheese right on top at the end so that it doesn't turn out to be creamy, you know, get lost in, in the rice. So you want to keep stirring this. You know, another reason that this costs so much in a restaurant is because you really can't do this in advance. There's no way to do this one in advance. You can take it just so far in advance, you know, bring it, uh, uh, if any restaurants are cooking in advance, they're not adding all the liquid to the very, to finish it. They're probably adding half the liquid and then they can refrigerate it, put it in a pan, and then finish it with the balance of the stock that they have. However, what it does is it ties up all the burners on the stove and therefore costs the cooks a lot of time, a lot of burners, and it's sort of labor intensive in the restaurant setting, but it is really good. There's no two ways about that. Yes, this is starting to look really good. It's starting to get nice and creamy, and the kernel, or I shouldn't say the kernel, but the grain is still looking pretty. And liquid's not quite absorbed. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. But keep stirring as you go. When this is absorbed just a little bit more, and it's just a little bit creamier, I'm going to stir in a few of my end ingredients. Like, I have a little sausage left from something. I have a little spinach left from something and that'll be good and I have some green onions and those will all make a really nice complement to the mushrooms and add a little protein by way of the sausage and cheese of course so it's almost there but since the sausage was stone cold pre-cooked by the way I'm going to put a little bit in now so that it can warm by way of the cooking broth. And I'm going to toss in a few green onions. And I am going to add a little bit of free blanched chopped spinach. So this will be nice and colorful too. Now what we want to do is taste adjust it. It does need a little bit of salt and it needs a little bit of pepper, fresh ground of course. And oh, this is tasting pretty good. I like a lot of fresh ground pepper only because I like it has a lot more zip to it when you grind it fresh and so I'm sort of a pepper freak so I tend to add a little bit more to it and now I'm going to shut this heat off because it's looking nice and creamy a little chunky but that'll be good and like I say this could have been shrimp or scallops or mussels or salmon and in which case that stuff goes in at the very end because it cooks so fast but now because it's done and it's nice and creamy I want to put this into the serving dish and pull it off of the heat. Peas is another wonderful addition to this. I love peas. Or you could do peas and ham. Anyway, pull that off of the heat. We're going to drizzle this with a little bit of white truffle oil and we're going to finish it with just a little tiny bit of cream you but you can see it's nice and creamy and god this just makes such a wonderful 
anytime meal, whether that be cold weather, summer, add a salad. And then what we're going to do is at the very end, put great, fresh grated, of course, a little Parmesan Reggiano. And there you have it, a nice bowl of risotto. Then what I'm going to do is add a salad to this and it's dinner. Oh my gosh, risotto, this is really good. So see how nice and creamy it is? I'm gonna top that with a little fresh chopped parsley because I love the stuff. And then also, we're going to make a quick little salad to go with that. And what I've got in here, just some really nice basic salad greens, some dandelion greens, a little dried cherry, sunflower seeds. And for a fast, easy dressing, I am going to squeeze a little bit of lemon. Salad dressing will have to be another little video, but squeeze a little lemon over the top. And I think I'm going to add a combination of lemon and vinegar. And I really like this port vinegar. God, this is some pretty nice stuff. Nice and mellow, just a little bit. I don't like too much vinegar because I really like the flavor of good extra virgin olive oil. So a little bit of that's gonna go over the top. A little bit of salt. Again, some fresh cracked pepper. And then the ratio is basically three to one, three parts olive oil, extra virgin of course, and one part vinegar or acid. And in this case, I split it between some lemon and pork vinegar, but any kind of balsamic vinegar, whatever, and just give it a nice quick little toss. And I'll tell you what, this is gonna be really good. Chloe, I know you want some salad too. You like salad. And then the best way to adjust this before you serve it, if you're serving this for guests, is taste the salad green itself. Um, you'll see how that worked out. And you know what? That worked out really good. Not too much acid, just enough extra virgin olive oil. And let's see if we got this right. Oh yeah, we got that really right. That is excellent. The truffle oil on top is heavenly. Chloe's saying she wants some too. Anyway, it's really good. I hope you try it. So I hope you can see what it's supposed to be like. And always taste as you go. Enjoy that recipe. And hope to see you again on the next episode. Thanks for coming to my kitchen. Well, I gotta add a footnote to this. I'll tell you what, this stuff is excellent. Wow, I've had a craving for risotto for quite some time, and this did the trick. Mm -mm. Two thumbs up on that one. Yes, do try it. You'd be real happy with that. Okay, signing off for now.